and gentlemen, unexpected success. Unexpected success. I mean, when do you start to feel like you made it, or like, are you still? Do you feel like you've made it? Do you feel? Are well, you? No, do you feel because successful? now I'm transitioning into beauty, and I am like, I am at the bottom of the totem pole, doing amazingly well. But I just went on a trip with seven other women that are like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Supercent or right, Courtney yeah, yeah, yeah. from The Main Choice yeah. or The Real BB Judy who has Kaleidoscope products. These women make a million dollars in an hour Black Friday. And I went wow. on a trip with them and I'm like just soaking up all this information and I'm just like, you guys are amazing. So um, the, so is this a pivot? I know that you had Yale before COVID. Yes. Right. I guess has COVID had any kind of effect on it your business? It exploded. Wow. Ex- exploded. Oh, I love it because this we're, this is a, this is season three. This is the comeback yeah. kids. This is like oh, like my this is what goodness. it's all about. I, it's and all I'll about. Give you, I don't mind sharing numbers. So my first my first year with um yo, I think we cleared sixty six thousand our first year. Um, our second year crazy we did seven hundred thousand dollars which was holy a little over seven hundred thousand which was like oh my gosh couldn't believe it this year we're not even you know the years we have a couple we every month we've done over a hundred grand a month holy (laughs) since since and guys i'm up close i'm up close to the skin since march and it works yeah since march it's a good so march was covid since march We've done over 100 grand a month. That's wow. amazing. Congratulations. That I'm is very Well, I think awesome. it makes sense too, right? Because self care. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, you know. You're in the house all oh, day. Yeah. I think house. I had probably yeah. a, a half inch of skin on my skin. Because you're like, <laughs> you're in the house. All of a sudden, I'm cooking yeah. three meals a day yes. and homeschooling and I'm a house. I'm like, it's just, it was yes. like. Yes. But one thing I think this pandemic did that was great for us and our community, it made us sit back and understand that our health is important. For so long, you know, our communities have gotten the least amount of health care. We've had the least amount of resources, even when it comes to nutrition and food. And and they're starting to put Whole Foods in our inner city neighborhoods now. But before that, we were going to bodegas for produce. And and we were eating at Seatown. Like, that was my local supermarket, Seatown. And if if we had a little brown on the lettuce, we peeled the brown off. We had a little brown on the apple, we cut it off. That's what we thought. That's what we thought. That's what I thought was okay. Right. You know? Um, But finally, we've taken an accurate assessment of where we are, of where our communities are. And I think that more than ever, we've been invested in building up our communities and building up our households and building up ourselves personally. So I think that that has been um, prevalent in how we spend our money. You know, we've been really um, persistent about self-care, about skin care, hair care. Those girls, those women that I mentioned that were on the trip with me, they're all in hair care. None of them are struggling. None of them took a a, a fold or had a, you know, a bad. Because we are, we're like, so many other women are going natural now. Right. So many women are caring about their skin, their under eye bags and acne and hyperpigmentation. We always thought black don't crack. Yep. That's what we said. That's yep. what we were taught. Black don't not, crack. No, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't crack the same way. That is a myth. Black but, will crack if you yeah, don't take care don't of take it. Care of it right. You have to take care of it. And I think people just had more time to do the research. People wanted more woosa moments after homeschooling. I need many woosa moments. And you need a moment. Yeah. Self care. I yes. mean, like that was the piece that just was missing in this whole, the shock of it all. Yes. Was like, okay, now how do I take care of myself? Because mm-hmm. that, that was that came at the end of the day. Yeah. Or, the, or for me, five a.m. Yes. When the house is still asleep, let me figure out how to like. What do I? Let me look in the mirror for five seconds. Yes. Right? I mean, most of us, uh, especially, and I talk about black people a lot. I'm black. I love black people. I love black women, but. We 
don't have time for self-care. We right. don't know how to make time for that because we have jobs. We have kids. Many of us are figuring out motherhood on our own. None of us are like multi-generational millionaires. It's not like our mothers and our grandparents and our other right. were millionaires. We're not trust fund Many babies. of us are like first, you know, mm-hmm. first generation yep. millionaires or even Fair. some of us first generation college kids. So we are literally constantly working, constantly trying to figure out how to make our next dollar, constantly trying to figure out how to keep it, how to invest, how to save. Those things take time. You know, we don't have time to just sit back and chill and have a, 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 a spa moment with candles and everything in our house. We don't. We have to steal those moments. Right. Yeah. And then we have kids and, and all that stuff. So those things are not easy for us. So question, I mean, you know, my thing is like, okay, so with all that being said, you still took the time to get involved with Until Freedom and you know, absolutely be added to the board of board of directors for Until Freedom. I mean, you know, with all that was going on, again, so inspirational. Um, you know, you thinking that my bag is already too full, and on top of you added on activism, right? And 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 using your voice um, and your profile, right, to mm-hmm. really fight for our our collective rights. Right. And uh, how did you yeah. get involved with that? Well, it's something that's been on my heart. Forever, I remember going to rallies for Sean Bell. I just didn't know how to use my voice. I, I, and the thing is, I also knew that I was never supposed to be, like I told you before, on TV. I never fit in. I never felt like that was my world. But I always knew that God gave me that position for a reason. And I would I would always ask, like, why do I have this reason? What is my purpose in this? And um, it hit me when my family faced... Um, some real crazy things with the criminal justice system, I realized that um, any given moment, that could have been me. You know, when officers came to my house with gun drawn and I had a two-month-old in the bed and a five-year-old or four-year-old in the bed with me, and I'm like, put your guns away. What? Like, if you guys know, if you're looking for, at the time it was my boyfriend, like, if you guys are looking for my boyfriend, you know that ain't nobody carry guns. It's not a crack house. Right. Like, why you have guns out? You know that there are kids that live here. In that moment, I could have been Breonna Taylor. Mm. And I, I am very clear that I was given this TV show for a bigger purpose. And when, you know, Trayvon Martin happened, and at the time... Um, that's when my my husband's son, he was living with us. He, his favorite thing was to wear hoodies. And we at that time, we lived in an area that was predominantly um, Asian again. And, um, you know, someone could have said, what are you doing here? What are you doing in this area? Right, and he could have been a victim. Yeah. And I remember going out, you know, to rallies for that. And I felt like I have got to use this platform for something other than to promote love and hip hop and the propaganda on that show. And I really felt like this was a place for me to use my voice to talk about the issues that are happening in our communities and to use my voice for marginalized communities all over, you know, for those moms that lose their children and they don't have a voice, for those um, moms that are out there fighting for justice for their husbands, their boyfriends, their sons, or even some mothers that are in jail unjustly. You know, serving all this time for things that they should not have deserved time for, for nonviolent crimes. Right. right. Um, and, and that's what I felt like. I'm going to have these millions of people that follow me. Let me try my best to make a difference. Because it's surely not to promote the latest shoes because I don't wear them. Right. It ain't to promote my fly car because I don't have it. Right. You know, it's, it's beautiful, it though. was to it's do beautiful. something that would hopefully change just one person's life. Right. And you were, you were down in Kentucky. I was. Correct. And you were arrested twice for Mm -hmm. protesting? Yeah. And you said you spoke briefly about your boyfriend at the time. You are Yandy Mm Smith-Harris. Your boyfriend is your husband. My husband. Officially, Mendeecees. Mm -hmm. And you spoke briefly about police coming to your house. Um, He went away for a little while. Yep. Um, a little while. It was a little while to you. It was a long know, it was time. A long, to me. long time. I did. It was, yes. it was four, four and a half years is a long time to be by yourself raising mm-hmm. two children. Yeah. Um, how did you maintain your, 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 your sanity? I didn't. Tell us about that. I didn't. I, I was not staying many days. Um, I don't talk about it much, and you guys never saw it because I learned how to put on a happy face. But I had right. to shoot a whole show. Exactly. Um, Deal with judgment. Oh, my People God. talking. Oh, my God. Everyone thinking they have something to say. Oh my thinking, they, thinking they know their the, voice matter. Thinking they know the story. Oh my goodness! Public opinion is as much as we say. Like if you, well, I say it. 
you don't know them personally don't take it personal bullish it's hard it's yeah. hard you know there were people that were coming for my my two-month-old child based on things that they heard or that they thought about my husband and the thing is and you know this is something this is a show that i'm getting ready to work on but there are levels to people's lives and the decisions they make. You know, people don't know his backstory. And just to give you guys a brief about his backstory, um, Mendici was raised um, with a single mother, met his father one time when he was about 16. The father that he thought was his father introduced him at 13 to pretty much take this package here, come back and I'll pay you for that package. So in his mind, if this is what his dad is telling him to do, this is what you think is what you're supposed to do. Life. This is what it is. You think is your life. Not school is important. Not this. Go to school after you do this. If you miss two days of school this week because you work and you making money, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And then when he finally did meet the person that was his dad, his dad died um, uh, right after he met him. And then his mom went away to rehab. So very young, he was on his own. And the only job he knew was this job right. that the person that was raising him taught him. Mm -hmm. um, and when he had his first child, that is when he was like, OK, this doesn't seem like it's something I'm supposed to be doing. Went back to school, got his GED and really tried to get his life on track, got into music met me um and by the time he met me you know i'm going i'm going fast forward with your career in music and everything else you want to do. he had a car service right. but he had all kind of stuff but when he got convicted of this crime it was an ongoing investigation for seven years so we had already been wow. together but this actual investigation was before i even met him oh so we had his son i think was five my son was two months and this was a charge that was from like 2005 or 2006 or something and i was like can they do that? Mm -hmm. And um, because it had been an ongoing investigation for years, it was like, yeah, yeah like they, they hadn't can. reached Statue of Liberty. It was like right under like right. whatever that was. Strategically right. done. Yes. So he was, you know, he hadn't come out on TV yet, but his show Love and Hip Hop was getting ready to air. He was um, he was managing Vado at the time, who was taking off. Right. We had just got a studio together. It was his car service business was doing well. It was all these things. He had another baby. All these things was happening, and I'm like, why are you guys here again? Like, what is this? Like, I was so confused. Like, what is he? What did he do that would make you guys come? I was like just confused. And um, even when I when I heard the charges, I'm like, what year did they start this event? 2001. I'm like, I didn't even know you then. And they're like, he's like. My God. And that is our justice system. And then and the crazy thing is this was a charge for a place with people he'd never been to or that he'd never known. That's a whole nother story that I won't get into. Right, right. But he had never been to Rochester in his life. And the two people that said he corroborated, meaning like um, for the, the charge he got was a conspiracy charge. There was no drugs sold. There was... Um, no wiretaps, anything, nothing like that. So they call it ghost drugs. So you can get arrested of two people what? having the same story, even if you've never met them. If they both say, oh, we heard him on the phone call, or this person said that he, he's the one that they got the drugs from, that's enough. And they'll wow. say, like, oh, you can go to trial, but if you go to trial, you'll risk 35 years, but we think you should take this eight, because on eight years, you'll only do four and a half. So it's kind of like, do I want to take 35 risk? And then, and then they say, oh, yeah, and 98% of you people... Um, go blow to trial. jail yeah, or, yeah. and get convicted trial. right so yeah. you know you can face 35 years when you blow trial and see your children when they're 35 you know you're a two months old son when he's 35 ouch wow. my god well he's home now thankfully he's home now I, I met him he's a great guy he's home now um, yes so welcome home to him you're welcome um, home so what's next and for you congratulations for you for making it yeah, oh, as, yeah. As, as, you know as a woman I'm like on the flip of that I mean, I've granted, I know it was very hard for him, but it's hard for you. Oh, we both. And I tell him all the time, like, he used to be like, you don't know what it's like to get, you know, you know, <laughs> you know you're going to eat. Right. right. You know, you got a bed. Right. You know, well, hope not these days, but usually, you know, you got heat. Right. Because I know that you, you were downtown. Yeah. In Manhattan, in right? Brooklyn. In, yeah. Oh, in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. I saw that protesting you protesting because they had about those they had no heat. inhumane conditions yeah. at the uh, facilities mm -hmm. in the right. city. Yep. Using so, your voice. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I just, 
and all of these things that happening, that all of these things happening in line just made it clear and clearer that I had a purpose outside of music and TV and entertainment. There was a bigger purpose. The fact that my husband was going through this, the fact that, you know, criminal justice um, or criminal injustice affected right. my household. The fact that, that that wasn't the prison that my husband was in, but he could have been. Right. There were people literally that hadn't spoken to their loved ones in three weeks and that, you know, inmates sneak cell phones all the time. They're like, Ma, I haven't had a cold meal. The water's brown and it's below zero in here. We wow. we have got he's like inmates, straight men were sleeping together in blankets to get body heat. Five oh men God. to a twin size bed wow. to get body heat. And these were pictures and videos that were being sent to me. And I'm like, why are you guys sending this stuff to me? Because I, I can't sleep. Right. And I still get these videos. And I'm just like, there's a reason why they picked me. Like, what would make these people send this stuff to me? And I'm like, no. So when Tamika Mallory um, decided that she wanted to start Until Freedom when she left the Women's March, I was like, what yeah. do you need? How can I support? You know, and, um, you know, I think that we need to look at life, like, when it comes to activism and when it comes to, don't you do it, my daughter's trying to leave. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> come in here, Infinity. Come introduce yourself. Come here. Say hi. So she's in college, and I just flew back. So I'm like, you're spending the whole day, and you're spending yeah, the She's like, no, stuck. I got my own friends. I got stuff to do. Come in. Come in. I'm like, you cannot leave me. You are stuck with me all day. No, no, come in. Um, introduce yourself. Come say, come say hi. Come no, say come hi. in. Say hi. Don't be fresh and don't be grown. You're still a child. This is Infinity. Hi, Infinity. Wait, wait. We hi, can't Infinity. see. Oh, bend down. There you go. Squat hi. down. <laughs> you guys can pull up a seat here. You can sit with me. Sit with me. There's enough space. Sit. Don't be grown. Sit. I'm leaving. That's okay. You can leave in a second. Mama's almost done. Mama's, Mama's almost done. We're all going to leave. Mama's almost done. Hi, Infinity. Hi. This is Infinity. Basketball star. Yes, basketball star. So Your what I was getting guard? ready to say really quickly before she tries to skate, because we're going to have a sleepover tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her since college started. And I said, when I come to New York, you're going to spend a night. She's like, I have a life now. I got friends. But you haven't seen me. Right. So don't you guys think it's right that she spends a night? 100%. She has you're to do it. Like what time? To go vote in the morning. So you we can vote at two different locations. So you can still leave I love it. and I, go vote. Wait, I can't drink to it, but I'm happy that you're yes. voting in the morning. That you're, you're focused that you're on definitely that. focused on voting. Yes. That's very important. That's very important. Exactly. Oh, so, this is, oh, so election day, guys, is tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> it Hopefully, is when tomorrow. this airs, no. we will have a new change oh, of leadership. God, I'm Please. praying. Okay. Anxiety on one side. But I, you know, I think that you know you're such an inspiration, and Absolutely. um, you know whether you know it or not, and I'm, you know, it's a blessing that you are on TV, that more people get a chance to see you, and you know, have a chance to just kind of get to know who you are. Um, I, I don't guess, feel like they know the real me though. Do you feel like they know me on TV? Like who I like? I'm super yeah, silly. You know what? This is super this quirky. is this is great because people just know the love and hip hop. Andy, they don't know the backstory. They don't know the social activism. They don't know the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. They don't know the girl from Harlem who grinded. I uh, just had a really cool got episode a, of Uncensored. Got an internship. You, you guys got to look at my episode. They when I did Uncensored, this was like a month ago. They got into all of that as well. Oh, I have to yeah. watch it. It was a great interview. Yeah. I loved that interview actually because they were like, we don't want to talk about love and hip hop. We want to talk about everything but exactly. love and hip hop. Right. Exactly. So she's trying to. Leave I know. Me. I see. Don't it. leave, I see Infinity. Don't Come leave. Come on, Infinity. Don't hang leave. out. Don't she's leave. trying to leave me. She's gonna. No, I, I think. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, um, I'm, you know, it's 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 inspiring. People, I feel like people are inspired when they see, when they get a chance to know your story. Like you're a hustler. You're yeah. persistent. No one gave you anything. You you emailed and badgered and and did, begged and, and, begged. <laughs> mm -hmm. and you didn't have like any issues with feeling. There was no you, you there's no pride. Yeah, I don't it was about pride. goals. Yeah. It was about staying focused. I guess. And it's so rare nowadays to have those, you know, characteristics. Those characteristics yeah. Because I think that everyone, everyone's focused on image and looking a certain way yeah. and being a certain way. And people expect it to be given to them. Oh, yeah. Right. These kids these days, they like, this given little one, honey, right. they feel like it is their right. Ooh, entitlement. Ooh, entitlement, baby. And, and, listen, and listen, a meal would get you in any door. Right. Because <laughs> that's your thing. You sent me dinner also. <laughs> I did. You know what it I is? So, so we started this podcast. I guess I started the podcast um, a couple of years ago because I felt like there were so many people who were like my age, middle middle age, I guess. And, Damn. you know, who. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> he really said that. 
farewell. And I mean, he's probably older than no, both of us. Right. So, so you cut put it me out. out there too. I'm like, damn, like you gotta put But it's real. You know, and I was seeing <laughs> friends who I felt like they had such a, huge goals growing up and they are just kind of resigned themselves to this life yeah, of this right. nine to five they hate. Yeah. And yeah. you just see that they're just giving up. Yeah. And it was driving me crazy because I'm like, you know, I'm I'm in my forties and I feel like you can still start all over. You can still do what you want to do. You don't have to stop absolutely striving because you can find an excuse to not do a million it's things. It's easy to do that. But there's so many reasons to do it. Yeah. And to make yourself proud. And the thing and is, not it's give hard. Up. It's right. humbling. You'll have nights where you don't sleep. I, this is crazy. I'm going to say this. And again, like I said, if I'm talking too long. I know you guys wanted this to be 20 minutes. It's probably been like an hour because I talk a lot. But <laughs> today I was thinking, so I came from I came from Georgia. I bought a house in Atlanta. Congratulations. And thank you. And I have my skincare. So we sold out. I have an office here, and my sister runs the office here. So we sold out of the product we have in our office. We just got a warehouse in Atlanta. So that's where the majority of the product is. But everything is wrapped up in pallets. And she's still shipping. We have, like, over 200 orders that came in. And she's like, Yindi, oh. I can't do anything. The stuff is, are you going to be going to the warehouse to get that stuff, unwrapping it? And I'm like, I can't. So what I did was I took two boxes off the pallets. Each box weighs 90 pounds. And I was like, I'm going to figure out how to fly with this. So I had this big, these two big suitcases. And I put the boxes in these suitcases. Like, it's like hockey bag suitcases. Wow. Mm. So I put the boxes. They're like the length of the. And I was like. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I'm trying to pull it. I couldn't do it because it was too heavy. So then I started pushing it this way. So then I got one of those smart carts. And I'm literally on that smart cart, like, pushing it. Like, the people like, you need help? I'm like, yes, help. <laughs> They're like, uh, not really wanting to help. And I'm pushing it. And I'm like. People just don't understand what CEO life is about. Like, I want right. to get to a place where I'm no longer the CEO. I want to be right. a shareholder because <laughs> yeah. nobody understands that CEO, CEO life is me. That's why I have on these sweats and my Uggs because I was literally on the yeah. plane rushing, trying to get here to get her. Because and, and when I leave here, I'm going to do to the office to do get the, get out these orders because at this point, I need to get these people these orders because it's been five days. Right. And I'm like, we have like a five to seven day window where people have to get their stuff, and so I have the overnight everything right. so I'm like I'm going to travel with these big old boss boxes life. Yeah. but people think boss life is getting on yachts and pulling up in your and PJs in your, um, and everything oh, they're doing Bentley's. it based on the images people hashtag in boss life but that's not boss life that's yeah. not boss life no. boss life is looking like this right. having broken nails if you look at my nails they broken because I've been carrying boxes and trying to figure out these 90 pounds I didn't understand I thought when you sh- when you have luggage it's $30 honey them bags cost me two hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. I'm like, I should have sure. overnighted them in the mail. That and the strife of carrying them, it was too much. But it's but that's but that is your passion, right? So even though that in my neck all pain that work, and I got a stiff back, right. <laughs> but but yes. you have to, tonight when you get your orders off, mm-hmm. there's nothing more gratifying, right? Than knowing no, that nothing more gra- honey. I keep looking at my phone. You guys see me look down because my Shopify is going crazy. And I'm like, more orders. I only bought 200. So I bought 200 cleansers and 200 toners. And she had everything else. And I'm like, okay. I want to say, like, stop ordering because I don't have enough. And I'm not coming back high here class, with these boxes. Listen, people. High class problems. Too many yes. orders and, yeah. and, and trying to fulfill. Right? It's true. It's I'm li- literally, problem. while I've been mm-hmm. sitting here. We made twenty six hundred dollars, and I've been here for how how long? Yo, I need to get in your phone. It's insane. <laughs> I, 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 had get, I had to get in the beauty. I'm not <laughs> telling you, it's it's insane. Right. We it's it's insane. No, it's a it's a blessing, and um, you know, based on the way that you've given back, uh, like all of the all all of the blessings that you continue to get are all worth it, and all you know, well deserved. Thank you. And um, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. And you know, I you know, I'm just getting to know you today and Dennis obviously has the benefit of having known you for a long time but I have to tell you that you have exceeded um, all the things that because we we talked about you before you got here girl but (laughs) really oh I feel she's like like, she's like she's listen she's so chill she's gonna talk like she's super cool I'm super chill yeah no you are you're amazing and you Um, know my best friend Ayana she did my wedding planned it and produced it on television. Wow. She uh, pretty much... She's so humble. Delivered Why? my baby. Why is she humble? Why are you so... She taught me how to breastfeed. Where is she? <laughs> I don't know. I don't she know. doesn't want to be on camera? What advice would you give Yo, to yeah. an entrepreneur? Well, a young person or a someone older, mid-aged, right? Because um, there's no time that's too late. 
Exactly. But that's scared to jump, scared to go after their dreams, scared to scared of success to a certain yeah. degree. I mean, I think that there are a couple things I would say. Being scared is great. I'm so scared to death right now. I just spent, I mean, I, I, I put most of my money in investments, but everything I had in the bank, I put it in my Black Friday and Christmas orders. And I was like, I'm going to go balls to the walls. Wow. I'm going to spend it because when I spend it, I'm going to pray to God I get it back. Right. So I got a bunch of products sitting in a warehouse, and I'm like, I hope this product sells. But you just lugged a bunch of it to New to- I, Well, I didn't even log a quarter of it to New York. Oh, wow. Not even a not even a, a dent in history of the stuff. I'm scared to death because I'm like, if something happens and this doesn't go through, like this is it. Do it scared. You got to do it scared. Like yeah. if you're not scared, then you ain't doing it right. My other homeboy said, do it ugly. Do it, do it. Do it ugly. Everyone needs a healthy dose of fear. Ugly. By the way, do that it. is not ugly. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> right, no. But, but do, do it scared. scared. Yeah. That's one. The other thing is when Tiffany from Violator told me, no, they're not looking for interns. And no, they're not looking for full-time positions. And no, she did not email me anything. She did not want to give me her phone number. None of that. If I would have gotten discouraged and turned away, nothing that transpired after that would have happened. Mm. But I had to get those three no's that made me persist and push harder. So I would say also, if you don't get the no's, it's probably not going to be what catapults your career. You got to get the no's. You got to get the turmoil. You got to have the tears. You got to have that mom that's like, you're not going to do it. This doesn't make any sense. My mom was like, you got a college degree. Why are you cleaning offices? I love my mom to death, but she was my biggest, biggest get behind me Satan. Like I had to be like, no, right. I had to unlearn. She worked in corporate for her whole entire life. She's retired and she looks like she looked young and fun, but she has been in corporate nine to five her whole entire life. And I had to unlearn the things that she taught me. And I had to unlearn that no's mean no. Doesn't right. mean no. Doesn't mean no. It means ask again and again and push harder until it's the right door for you. I love it. I love it. Um, and then finally, I would say, you know, again, like I told you before, people ask me all the time, where do you see yourself in five years? Every time I've dreamt out the box, every time I've stepped out and done something that was totally not me, it's been what's made me successful. When I was in retail and I went into Violator and I, I went into music, I toured the world with Missy Elliott and Busta and 50. I toured the world. There's, there's, I mean, I've been to Africa. I've been to Dubai. I've been to Abu Dhabi. I've been to Greece. I've been to Russia. I toured the world. When I, you know, left music and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really going on TV. They're going to hate me. It's been 10 years. I've made more money than I've ever could have imagined on TV. And I've never had to sell no behind. I've right. never had to take off my clothes and I've never had to fight. Right. You know, um, but again, you it didn't was compromise me. your integrity. It, yeah. And people respect that. And it was uncomfortable. It's every to this day, every time I shoot, every time I gotta go out, and I'm I'm the longest standing female on the show. I'm uncomfortable every time I go shoot because I'm like, I know these girls are gonna be fly. I know they're gonna have some drama. I'm like, I know that my hair probably ain't is is afro on the top and straight on the bottom because I didn't straighten it right myself. <laughs> you know. But you, th- yeah, I mean, I'm I, uncomfortable. I, I think it's great that you know the things that you're thinking, nobody else is thinking. But I feel like, uh, honestly, if I could be su- super transparent, it's like encouraging for us to know that you have the same thoughts that we have. Oh, I'm super <laughs> regular. It's like, huh? You mean I'm not the only one? That's no, like, oh, the honey. Size of my head compared to my head. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Wait, this hip, this, this, this it's, head. It's, yes, the relationship out. is off sometimes. I get it. Right. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so the last thing I would just say is just make uncomfortable decisions. You know, even me stepping into beauty, that was, I birthed that baby when my husband was going away. And I was going through a depression, um, and I was just like, I need something else. Like, TV was driving me crazy because everybody had their opinions about stuff. And I was like, I want to do something that makes me feel good, makes me feel beautiful, and I don't have to deal with anyone's p- opinion about me. Right. Reality TV is everyone's opinion about how, who you marry, what you wear, what your hair looks like, who your friends are. And I was like, I just want to do something different. And um, I thought about, you know, what my issues were. I was having issues with my skin because of always wearing makeup. And um, I stepped out on faith and did this. It was uncomfortable. I failed my whole first line. I had this trash because I broke out from the first line. I spent money. One of those no's again. Mm -hmm. 
But I, it made me uncomfortable, and I'm like, I'm not going to go out of failure. I done told my husband over the phone on my collect calls, like, listen, I'm doing a skincare line. It's about to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I got to do it. Right. So, you know, I'm like, if I fail this, he's going to be like, you wasted all your money when you know you need to be saving your money because I'm not even there. So I'm like, I got to make this work. And it was uncomfortable for me to risk possibly being a single mom, you know, and I wasn't, I was, I was like, I'm not spending anything from him because I want to make sure he comes home with exactly what he had in the bank. Right. So I was very, you know, intentional about how I spent my money. So when that first line was breaking me out and my mother and my sister, I was uh, like, that's not, that wasn't part of the plan. Um, I had to be uncomfortable and I had to push. So those are the things I would say. Like, you know, be uncomfortable. Um, don't stop at the first no or the second or the third no. There was another one I said. What was the first? We got it taped. Whatever. Persistence. 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 There you go. That's what I would say. No, and, it, and, it, and I think that um, you are the result of what happens when you do. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And, I, and I'm still a work in progress. Yeah, you know? no, I mean, listen, I'm blown away by you. Yeah. Um, I don't want to keep on capping you up. But <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, hey, no, that's, that's crazy. Thank you so no, much. No, it is okay for it. us to edify each other. No, I think you're unbelievable. And I think that you. Um, you are an inspiration. And I'm so happy that you were able to do this. Yes. I'm, I'm glad Thank that I made Thank you so much here. for coming through, Andy. Yeah. You just listened to The Comeback Kids, presented by Unexpected Success with Joy and Dennis. Please like and subscribe.